Now it's time for the word. Amen. Amen. This week the emphasis was mainly for parenting. For parenting. The prayers was for family and for children. For family, for marriage, and for, for family, for children. We've been emphasizing for children. Some of you, you, you take not serious these prayers we should be making for families, for marriages. And I'll let you know, after a few years, you realize there are some mistakes you made. You did not invest enough prayers for your own marriage and for your own family. When the shakes begin to come, when things begin to shake, you'll know that the investment of your prayers in your family were not matching with the challenges which were waiting for you ahead of you. So it's important. Our children need to be covered and surrounded with our prayers. Our spouses, they need to be surrounded, covered with our prayers. We should be people who pray, interceding for our families and for our marriages as well. So this morning, we have a speaker who's coming to be speaking on the area of parenting. He is an educated person, amazing educated person. And he knows that we have some singles here, not yet married people that are here. And he will be making all the balances for us. But it's important that these things that have been spoken in a big and wide congregation a service like this one. So that people, they begin to see how important it is when it comes to an area of parenting. Amen? How important, how important it is. So it is pleased to God that this time around, our dearest brother, my big brother, a Reverend Dr. Leonard Maboko, who today, by God's grace, has come with his wife. I respect you, <laughs> Mama Pastor Yusta Maboko. I respect you so much. I usually call her my sister-in-law. I'm so pleased to have you today in our worship service. And without him much time being consumed, it's my greatest honor this morning to be inviting the servant of God, Reverend Dr. Leonard Maboko, to come and share the word of God to us this morning. Please receive him with the warmest city welcome. church. I'm actually I'm part of this church. And surprisingly, I got my wife from this church. Got married about 30 years ago and uh, my wife was uh, one of the girls, ladies and uh, beautiful ladies. In, uh, by then we were at Mwimbili. Dr. Makigonja remembers, and, uh, and I think you were in my wedding as well, during my, yes, so you remember your sister. You used to call sisters, brothers, but all of a sudden things changed, you know. <laughs> that's how it is, that's how it is, that's how life is. So, Sister Yusta, please, just <laughs> raise up, and, uh, and she's a pastor now. So that's my wife. Thank you, thank you. Her name is Yusta. Yusta is, uh, we are pastoring together a church in Mbea, and wonderful man of God, and uh, I don't know if uh, usually, actually, your are, you, you are, you are pastor teases me. He said, Leonard, okay, my first name is Leonard. Leonard, is, uh, you are lucky that you had this mama in, in, in your life. And... Uh, I truly confess that it, I, I was so lucky, and uh, thank God for that. Right now, for four years, I've been here in, uh, in, in, in Dar es Salaam. We had already just started the church. She's doing wonders. She's still pastoring the church, and uh, everything goes well. So how can, you, how, how can you deny or reject thanking God in that, in that matter? So I really appreciate and thank God for that. 
Today I'm talking about parenting, and it's good that she's here. I, I didn't bring her because of this topic, but it just happened. That so that's the will of God. That I'm talking about parenting while she's here. Oh, sorry. Can you have your seats? So God bless you. Certainly. God bless you. God bless you. So she just happened to be since last year. I was in Bay actually last week, and we came together on Monday last week. Yes, and. Uh, she has, has some issues that she has to fix. But then it happened that she's here this morning. So, happy family month. And uh, I know that this is a family month and uh, I was asked to talk about this challenging topic about parenting. And I don't know if my kids are here already. And, uh, I have two boys, uh, Joel and Josiah. Are you? Are you here? Are you already here or no? Oh, okay. So can you stand up, please? That's my, my last son. Just stand up and don't feel shy. The, the shorter one is my last son. 24 years now. And uh, last but one, Joel, is 26 now. So thank you for being here. I'm talking about parenting. This morning I'm talking about parenting. So I'm privileged, and uh, this morning I have my wife, I have my kids. And if I say anything, I don't know. We I gonna have problems in my home today. That <laughs> I'm in, I'm in trouble. That Leonard, Leonard, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's so nice to have your family around, eh? And uh, okay, let me see. I was asked to talk about parenting and to be more specific, Christian parenting. And uh, Christian parenting, because you can parent even if you're not a Christian. But I was specifically asked to talk about Christian parenting. And uh, let me start by defining what's parenting and probably try to, 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 to talk about Christian parenting as well. Parenting is bringing up or rearing a child or children, especially the care, love, and guidance given by a parent. But uh, I was even struggling, and uh, by the grace of God, some people talk about not only parents, but even guardians. You can parent even if you are not a parent, a, a biological parent. And uh, it's all about playing a role as a parent, of course. It happens. So, of course, it talks about biological parents, but that guidance that's needed, that love, that care to bring up a child, that's what is called parenting. But for Christian parenting, it adds something very important, and this is to raise your child in a godly manner. To make sure that you do all efforts. One of the things that you struggle to do, you have to raise him or her to become a good Christian. Okay, another definition of parenting is also that is, is defined, parenting is also defined as the process of promoting and supporting physical, emotional, and intellectual development. Physical, emotional, and intellectual development. But if you go to these dictionaries, they don't talk about spiritual. Now, as a Christian, for me, I'm adding to that, include also spiritual development. So, if you talk about Christian parenting, I'm talking about promoting and supporting your child physically, emotionally, intellectually, and spiritually. You have to add the spiritual component. And uh, I was struggling to, 
to, to understand, does it mean also I'm all, I can also be parented at this age? But many definitions talk about raising a child from infants up to adulthood stage, when she or he starts being an adult, starts to become independent, take care of himself or herself. So this is around 18 years. So good that I have my 24 boy here. I'm not parenting him. Am I parenting you right now? <laughs> anyway, it can go beyond, but those are just, these are the, the, this is the crucial period that's been spoken. If you read too many definitions, it also, they talk about, people talk about from infancy stage to the, when they are becoming adults. So this is up to around 18 years. So, for Christians, remember that the spiritual component is very important. Now, I was struggling. There are so many aspects of parenting, so many aspects. And by the grace of God, God has directed me, the Holy Spirit directed me to focus more on the spiritual aspect. I know we are supposed to take care of our, our kids, good education, good health. Emotionally, maybe I may touch a little bit, but intellectually, but I want to focus more on the spiritual aspect. As Christians, or as Christian parents or Christian guardians, the spiritual component is one of the aspects that God expects us, really, to focus when we are raising children as Christians. So I want to bring some biblical perspective on parenting. So it's not only, I'm not a psychologist and... Uh, I know we have psychologists and even, I'm not going even to categorize, you know, different stages. You know, an infant, how to, to deal with an infant is different from dealing with an adolescent, guy who can understand. And I think the most challenging time, I don't know, for my fellow parents, is when the adolescent age is very challenging. Yeah, even infancy stage, but the kid is so dependent on you. So, but when your kids reach that adolescent stage, I think even for themselves, they realize that things are changing. Anyway, there are two parties here, two sides. The role of a parent and the role of a child. So I'll try to touch both a little bit. I'll, go, I'll be going very fast, and I'll focus more on the area of uh, parents the role of parents or guardians. But also, at the end of my, 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 my talk, I'll talk a little bit about the role of, 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 of children. So the key verse, key verse is, I have two key verses from Timothy. Second Timothy, chapter one, verse five. But also, second Timothy, chapter three, verse 15. Let me start with the Second Timothy 1, 5. The Bible says, this is from, I think from easy to read version of the Bible. I, rem I remember your true faith. Paul writes to Timothy, I remember your true faith. That kind of faith first belonged to your grandmother, Lois, and to your mother, Eunice, I know you know you now have that same faith. I think you can learn something here. Talk about Timothy, and uh, Paul is reminding his spiritual son, Timothy, that yes, I preach to you. I'm your spiritual dad. But this faith Remember, it first belonged to your grandmother, Lois. And uh, this, uh, this translation, I, I like it. It belonged to her. It's like she was possessing that faith. And now passed over to his mother, who was known as Eunice. And I know now you have that faith. So there was a process 
of these people inheriting faith from their parents. And the ultimate, the ultimate spiritual goal for good Christian parenting is for a child to have a true Christian faith. That's the ultimate goal. Make all efforts. Do anything. But making sure that your child reaches that stage. That's what Paul was saying. Reminding Timothy. That Timothy, this faith that you have, this faith that you have, the same, and he says the same faith that you have belonged to your mother, but also belonged to your grandmother. I don't know what happened with the grandfather and the <laughs> grand, um, and, and, and the, the father. I'm not sure. My, your, 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 your pastor now is taking a PhD, I think, doctorate. And what happened with this husband of... Uh, of, of Lois and, and okay, we'll discuss later. Maybe single parenting. Maybe they had already passed away. I'm not sure. But the faith that was only the, the, the people I mentioned is ladies, mamas, your grandmother, your mother, and now you are a son, you are a man now, you have that faith. But you inherited your faith from your mother and who you inherited from your grandmother. Anyway, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. You have known. 2 Timothy 3, 15. Paul continues to talk to to, 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 to Timothy, you have known the Holy Scripture since you were a child. This Scripture are able to make you wise. And the wisdom leads to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Okay, the point I'm trying to make here, it seems Timothy was taught about Christianity. Since childhood. So, we get a clue here. We get a clue here. That that true faith that Timothy had, which is spoken in chapter 1, was taught by, the, uh, by his, his, his mother and grandmother while he was a child. They taught him the Holy Scripture. Because it says you were told this. And uh, if you read to chapter 1, who, inherit, who, who taught them the faith? It's obviously the mother. So, we get one important secret of the true faith of Timothy. He was taught the Holy Spirit or sound doctrine since his childhood. So, don't ignore teaching our children. And I'm focusing on spiritual matters. Now, I'll talk about three elements of Christian parenting. Only three. I don't want to complicate myself to have seven points. I have only three, and by grace of God, let me try to rush a little bit and see how I can manage with time. So, I'm talking about kill elements. I know there are so many elements, so many elements. But I've just chosen three elements. And uh, in other ways, I'm talking about roles, three roles of parents. Number one, parents or guardian should be raw models. Raw models. It's obvious from Eunice and Lois, I'm sure these ladies were role models to Timothy. So, number one is being a role model. Parents to be role models. Number two, to teach or train up your children. Not only being role model, practicing what you believe to show them so that they can see, they can imitate. 
But, I, I, and that's very important. For sure, you cannot train, you cannot teach if you are not practicing what you believe. No way, no way, no way. Utapiga bla bla tu maneno, wanza mzewa sound ya mekuja. Wasema baba mwenyewe, mamba ya mshinda, uyu. Mzewa sound, umemsikia? Dingi. And they call us dingi and... I know, I know, I know. And my son, I, I, I had my, birth, my birthday on the 13th of July. I don't know. Is, no, I think it was not that day. I think it was another day. I, was, I, I took a picture and uh, posted on my status. And uh, my son, Josiah, my last born, and commented, and she, he laughed and said, Mshua, we're Mshua. <laughs> I think he remembers. <laughs> so they call us them. Mshua, Dingi, Nini, Vyote, Vile, Vada, Nivo. You know what I'm talking about. By the way, how many are below 18 in this congregation today? Below 18. Nani wako chini ya miaka kumina nane? Who are below 18 in this congregation? Only one. Okay. Okay, now wengine, wengine, sijui. Okay, me, serious issue. And uh, now you are becoming adults. If you are above 18, na wewe unakonda kuwa dingi. So you have to listen to this. Hata kama unasema, no, 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 today the topic was about parenting, parents, parents. No, you are going to be a parent. Very soon, my son, you are going to be a parent. So listen to this topic. Okay, so teach or train up your children. You have to intentionally teach. Of course, I've started, maybe I could put the being role model at the, the end, but I just started with that because that's very important for me, at least. So train what you believe, teach what you believe to your children. And number three, learn to discipline, correct your children. Discipline, correct. It's biblical. Can you hear amen from the, my, 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 my kids and my, my sons and daughters here? It's biblical. Okay. Now, those are the areas that I'll be touching. If I uh, don't finish, then you know what I was intending to, to talk about. Okay, let me start with uh, being a role model. The first key verse that we just lay, read Seems that it seems that Timoth learned the true faith from his mother Eunice, and who also learned from her mother Lois. So Lois was a role model to Eunice, and Eunice was a role model to Timoth. It's obvious. You learned this faith. You inherited this faith. It belonged to somebody, and who passed over to you, and now you are who you are. So children, let me also tell you something. Children learn more by watching than listening. But if you are not practicing what you are saying, Somebody, I think there was uh, about a, a month ago, there was a lady here who was teaching, who is, I think, a teacher in the youth church, youth or children, whatever. And uh, she, she explained something that puzzled me, and I was a little shocked. And I think she was giving an example that, uh, okay, they were teaching children, telling them, or oh, she's the one who was teaching, that you have to be like your parents. And all of a sudden, I think one of the kids broke up and uh, started crying. And why are you crying? Oh, it's not my parents. Yes, yeah, you can talk about uh, be like my daddy. No, it's not. So being a role model 
they see you. No, because my daddy beats my wife, my, my, my mother every day, every day. What can I learn from him? So all of a sudden, a small child is crying just to be told that you have to be like your, mother, your, your father. I was shocked, really. Do you think that parent was not teaching or instructing the kids? You have to behave like this. You have to be like this. But I think the most important thing that was missing to be a role model. So children learn more by watching than listening, especially at this tender age. And I was also one day I was surprised and uh, all my, my the small kids, they call me Babu in my, 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 my church. All these children, and they call me Babu, Babu, Babu. And uh, one of my church elders told me one day, I think they were, they were having this family fellowship and uh, reading the word of God. And I, think, I don't know what happened. They, they had a session to act or to... To, to do comedy, I think in their family. Now, the kids, everyone was presenting whatever his talent is. And one of the kids stood up and said, I'll be doing like how Babu does in the church. <laughs> and she started imitating exactly how I sing. Even the voice, how I changed my melody and you know, my voice and... And everything was laughing. Everybody was laughing. And actually, even the younger ones started laughing. And they are the younger ones who came to talk, Babu, you know, so and so is imitating how you do. And, and I, I was asking this, this boy, and how do I usually sing? And try to sing the way I sing. That voice. <laughs> and they were exactly imitating that voice, Yangu. And this small guy was laughing, and the, 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 the younger ones were laughing. And our sister was, you know, imitating the way you sing. And how do I sing usually? And she, they started imitating how I sing. And I really laughed. I said, okay. So, and this is, we're talking about miaka minga biusi, miaka minesi, four to six. Ila dada yao ndo mkubwa kidogo, above 10, and who was imitating and uh, acting like a comedy. Just like a comedy, but to be funny, but he chose to imitate how Babu does in the church. Anyway, children learn more by watching. Parents should expect, now, very serious verse here. Parents should expect to reap what they sow. Harvest what they plant to their children. You cannot, this, 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 uh, I want to apply it here. Let me go to, I think, Galatians. This is Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9, verse 7. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. The Bible says, if you think you can fool God, you are only fooling yourself. You will harvest what you plant. So what are you planting to your kids? I want to bring it to the level of parenting. What are you planting? So what you are planting, you are going to reap exactly what you have planted. How you behave, they are going to imitate. They are, when they are adults, they will imitate. They will be taught. Sasa na wewe usiyo kamrithisha mtoto tabia mbaya. Kusababu, we have talked about Timothy. So it means there are children who are also inheriting bad behavior from their parents. That's what it means. So now what I'm trying to convince you here is that you will reap what you sow. You will harvest what you plant. If you want your children to have true Christian faith, you must have that Christian faith. 
you must show that Christian faith. Mwe waombaji sana. One of the key elements we unaomba sana. Let them see you fasting. Si umetoka kutuambia tu fast hapa. Daddy, usually when our pastor announces about fasting, I've never seen you fasting. <laughs> and you start, yeah, yeah, you know it's a very good thing. You have to fast and uh, explain where pig sound is out. No one will listen to you. By the grace of God, anaweza ka fata ya anawambia kanisani na, na viongozi wa dini. Au na walimu wake. They are teachers in their classes. By the grace of God. It can happen. Lakini you being a role model, forget about it. Yani wewe. Giving. You have to give. You have to give. Be a good giver. A cheerful giver. Always when they announce any kind of giving, you start complaining. Ah, I don't know. Yeah, pastors, ah, I don't know. This church, I'm thinking twice if I should continue worshiping that church. And are, your ch- kids are listening. And tomorrow, you want to teach them to be good givers. Cheerful givers. Ah, forget about it. So, be a role model. So, if you have, you want your children to have that true faith, true Christianity, by the grace of God, I'm sure, I have my, I'm sure my kids have learned a lot from me about Christianity. <laughs> when it comes to you, he's God. Daddy, eh? Daddy, forget, he can forget about children, but he, he's God, yeah? They know. I will respect my God. Ask them, once we are done, just ask them, how about Christian faith, your dad and mom? They'll tell you. Mama, oh, hey. <laughs> you, sir. Joel, you know about your mom, eh? I'm not cheating to this congregation. You know about her faith and her dedication, commitment to, to her God. Just ask them. They'll tell you. So convince your children that God is more attractive than anything the world can offer. Convince your children that your God is more attractive than anything the world can offer. Ukifika hapo, umewin. Convince them by doing what is what you are taught, what you, 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 you listen, what you read, what you understand. Show an example. Okay, number two, teach or train up. Time is, is rushing. Teach or train up your kids. Let's go to, to Deuteronomy 6. Deut- Deuteronomy Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 6 and 7. I'm talking about now training up your children or teaching your children. It's spoken in the Bible. The Bible says, verse 6, Always remember these commands that I have given you today. 7. Be sure to teach them to your children. I'm reading from... From easy to read version, Bible. Be sure to teach them to your children. Talk about this command. Talk about them. Teach them. Talk about them. When you sit in your house and when you walk on the road, don't stop talking about this command, about this command, about this word of God. Basically, we're talking about the word of God. How do you teach your children? Oh, what a foundation we have a very wonderful, you know, class t- teacher. And, uh, that lady is so wonderful, I tell you. 
She meets them only, only one, one, I think, one, for a few hours in the church. The rest of the days, the rest of the hours, you have your, your children. Now, the Bible says, always remember these commands that I have given you today. Be sure to teach them to your children. Talk about these commands when you sit in your house and when you walk on the road. Talk about them when you lie down and when you get up. It should be a serious business. Teaching about the word of God should be a serious business of parents. Do you teach your children? Now, Fundisha, you have to teach. You must teach. Okay, Proverbs. No. The same Deuteronomy 11, verse 19. Verse 19, 11, 19, the same Deuteronomy, but chapter 11, verse 19. Teach these laws to your children. Talk about these things when you sit in your houses, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Teach, talk, teach, talk, teach, talk, talk about this command. Talk about this law. Okay, Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. 22, 6, Proverbs. Teach children in a way that fits their needs. And even when they are old, they will not leave the right path. Teach them. Train them. Of course, in the other translation, there are some translations that talk about training instead of teaching. So I've put them together. Teach or train up your children. Now, one of the roles of parents or guardians is to teach or train up the children the way they should go, the way they should behave, the word of God. You have to teach the word of God. You have to teach them. It's your responsibility as a parent. Make all efforts and use different ways to present the gospel of Christ. And I, I'm, as I said, I'm not going to teach you how to train uh, one year, two year, those kind of stuff. I think I'll be, at, I have limited time. But use, make all efforts, use all different ways according to the, to, 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 the, to the age stage of your, your, your kid, to present the gospel of Christ to the children every day, every day, every moment. Use every day, every moment to teach. Spare time. So intentionally you have to spare time. I don't have time. Okay. You know, to Namsemo, even in Swahili, so, do you want the world to teach your, 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 your kids, your children? I think no. Kwayo, use, you have to spare time to do this. Have time with your family. You have to worship God. You have to sing. You have to have fellowship together. And, Bwana, uh, wanaume, sikilizeni, nisi pepese macho hapa. Wanaume, you are a pastor. Kabisa. Kwenye familia. In your family, you are the head of the family. Sindio. Where sindio kichwa, even the Bible says. Even, hata tunapofanya, siji nini, head of the household. Siju wa mana nyingi ni wanaume. Labe kute wanaume ya mekufa, yetu kifanya survey zetu. Yes, head of the, hata duniani kwa tunajua head of the household. Sasa, kama head, one of the responsibilities, one of the, your responsibilities, you are a pastor. Kids, start calling pastors your parents. Eh? You have to start calling them pastors. And just to provoke them and make sure that you steer up what they are not doing. Pastor, pastor, we are told by Pastor Leonard Maboko that you are our pastor here. So what, what's about today? What, uh, what, uh, how is the service going to look like in our fellowship today? Yeah, who is uh, preaching today? Who is singing? Yeah, that's, uh, we are, you are pastoring us. 
Ndiwa hivyo sasa. Hapa watoto walizeni. Yale walikuwa nakubiri. Wao wenyewe wanakubiri. I'm not cheating. Kama bahati nzuri wako hapa. Si nimehubiri sana. Mtake mstake mtoka mnahubiri. <laughs> Sijui kuhubiri today wewe ndio utakuwa kiongozi wa sifa. Uta, Utajikanyaga kanyaga, you do whatever. You see ya 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 today um, I'm gonna sing this chorus and where sauti hata ikipenya ika, ikaingia huko tutaelewana tu. Mwisho wa siku ngoja tum, 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 leo mhubiri wetu leo atakuwa ni Josia. <laughs> Josia alikuwa mjanja, alikuwa na kawimbo kaka anapenda injili maana yake habari njema. Baba tueleze maana ya injili. Sasa hapo wanze kuka uanze kukariri mistali yani na kukerimisha hapo sasa hapo tukao tunarudia zile zile mangine, mangine ma, ngapi Yohana 3:16 kwa maana jinsi Mungu alipenda ulimwengu yani akiongoza Josia ukimwambia Josia unakumbuka una, una ulipokuwa unatupiga kashikashi kila ukimu injili Josia tuimbie wimbo injili maana yake habari njema we Josia ulitutesa we mwanangu wewe Lakini ndio hivyo you train them. Unatoka pale unahubiri. Leo akija kwa hubiri mimi sitashanga. Hayo sasa ni Mungu atawaita. Lakini at least you have to train. That's what the Bible says. Whether they're going to be pastors or not, but you have to train, you have to teach them. Make sure that you teach them every moment. When you rise up on when, when you lie, when you wake up, when you are walking, when that's what the Bible says. Oh parenting Timothy is second Timothy the second Timothy 3:15 ile tulisoma it says you have known the holy scripture since you were a child so who was teaching you is it in the church the synagogue no ilikuwa ni Yunis na Lois Thank God for this women of faith. Kwa hiyo be a woman of faith na Okay, last last point. Learn to discipline your children. Hey, hii sasa hii topic hii. Discipline your children. Hebu tujitahidi kidogo. Ngoja ni jaribu kwenda hapa. Sasa hapa kina Josia hatapenda. Proverb 13 13 and verse 24 if you don't correct your children you don't love them is a true diversion i like this version if you don't correct your children you don't love them if you love them you'll be quick to discipline them ni mimi nimesema sasa hii modern parenting eh hey, god help us you have to speak nice words only don't punish don't punish don't discipline your children no 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 you destroy them psychologically they become low self esteem you know they don't they're not confident in your eh. Bana, so my psychologist him to say dear. You go up in my leo, you know, give me psychologist him to say dear when parenting is challenging is you to find it by kizazi. Like the Bible says, you don't correct them, you don't love them. You don't you 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 have to be quick to discipline them. Aya 29. Proverb yo yo. Proverb 29. And verse fifteen, na seventeen, fifteen and seventeen. Proverb twenty-nine, verse fifteen. Punishment, punishment, and discipline can make children wise, but children 
who are never corrected will bring shame to their mother, not to their father. <laughs> to their mother, shame. Najua wanaumia zaidi wanawake. Na hata si tunaumia, hata mi wanaumia, lakini mi wani kongangari kidogo, hata yusta najua. Wa kidogo na heza kapotezea na sea, bana ebu tujitie ngufu tu bana, mungu atadili na vio. Lakini mama tambe, no, no, lakini daddy, ebu, husband, please, darling, you know, I was so hurt when you smelt it. What should we do? <laughs> Sawa, melewa. Ah, aya wana. Punishment and discipline can make children wise, but children who are never corrected will bring shame to their mother. 17. Correct your children whenever they are wrong. Then you will always be proud of them. They will never make you ashamed. Now you, you father and mother, you parents. Sawe. Kwa hiyo, ebu, ebu to, oh, asante, nashukuru. Oh, time is up. Almost up. Okay. Okay, let me finish by a few verses as well. Again, Ephesians. Ephesians. Ephesians 6, 4. 6, chapter 6, verse 4. Fathers, don't make your children angry, angry, but raise them with the kind of teaching and training you learn from the Lord. There is an aspect of teaching there, but I'm just trying to go a little bit further. Kwamba, when you are, you are correct them, don't provoke them. Don't make them angry. Do pray that God give you wisdom on how to correct your children. I don't have time to go into details, but I pray that God will help you. And uh, Colossians, Colossians 3, verse 21. It's almost what I've just read. Fathers, don't upset your children. If you are too hard to please, they might want to stop trying. So the goal to teach your children, the goal, the ultimate goal to teach your children is, I mean, the, when you are correcting, the ultimate goal is to teach them, to teach them, to make sure that they learn something and show that parent love, loving discipline. You don't just discipline. And uh, I want to, 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 to uh, if I had time, I could just go to this, but let me quickly tell you, control your emotions. Control emotion, don't discipline in anger. Don't provoke them while you're correcting them. And um, make sure that you discipline them to create intimacy and not distance in order to make your child come back and apologize. After your stage, I have done wrong. I have to apologize. This was wrong. Yes, daddy, this was wrong. And you, I deserve to be punished. Show them that. So, avoid also to, to and or ignore mild be, misbehavior. Sometimes there are things you are just ignore. So you kill a kid to even a minor misbehavior. Viboko, sijui nini, maneno makali. No, no, no. So you have to, those mild misbehavior. Okay, let me tell you one thing. This, these kids, they will do mistake anyway. They will do mistake, a lot of mistakes. So as an away grade, if you can you can you can you can discipline your your, your kid. And uh, I said three points, but the last one which I don't want to go deeper is pray for your children. The fourth thing. And that's why we are praying. I tell you, it's not an easy task. And that you, there are so many verses about praying, but I've chosen Philipp, Philippians chapter 6, I mean chapter 4, verse 6. You have to pray. You have to pray. We need God to help us to, 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 to raise these children. Quickly, for your 
for, for your children, your responsibility, number one, hear and listen to your parents. Listen to your parent, to your guardian. Listen to the instruction that you are being told. This you can get from Proverbs 1, 8 to 9. You have to hear, you have to listen to your parents, to your guardians. Number two, Ephesians 6, chapter 1. You have to obey and honor your parents. Obey and honor your parents. Number Ephesians 6, you can go up to, 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 to verse 3. Number, number, number 1 to verse 3. There are two issues there. There is an element of obeying your child. Your, 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 your. You can read from Amplified Bible. I, I really enjoyed reading the Amplified Bible. If you can read the Amplified Bible, you'll get it very clearly. Obey, but also there's an aspect of honoring or respect your parents or guardians. So two issues here in Ephesians 6, 1 to 3. Number one is obeying. Number two is honoring or respecting your, 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 your parents. But the final thing for you are your responsibility as kids as well. Pray for us as well. You have to pray for us as well. My son, you have to pray for your daddy. It's not an easiest, it's not an easiest task to raise you. Pray for him. Say, Baba, I lift my daddy, my mom, unto your hand. I know it's not easy. You know, sometimes there are kids, they are very honest. Some kids are on, very honest. And even spiritual kids. I remember one, one child of mine in, in my church told, Daddy, I know I'm a troublemaker. I know myself. And raising me, taking care of me, I know how, how troublesome I am. So there are some kids they admit, they know I, I, I'm making a lot of mistakes. So if you know that, then it's not easy. Pray for him. Pray for your mom. So, eh? God bless you. Karibu, Pastor. Doctor Mokoko, before you leave, please, I'd like you to make a prayer for children and for parents. Would you please stand up? Hallelujah. The last point is pray. The last point is pray. The last point is pray. Praying, I know we are parents, and we all go through some parenting challenges, and we need God's grace. Amen? We need God's grace. Some of you your siblings, your young brothers, or your brother's children, your sister's children, you know how they are bringing some challenges to their parents. And I would like to ask you to be praying for us this morning for this uh, whole thing of parenting, for parents and even for children who are here. Uh, as you mentioned, that we all need God's grace in our upbringing of our children. So this morning, let's ask him, the servant of God, to make a prayer for all of, all of us this morning as far as the parenting, the raising up of children is very concerned. Uh, Reverend, welcome. Our Heavenly Father, I want to thank you this morning. I want to praise you and worship you. I want to acknowledge you. I want to say thank you for what you have taught us this morning about this topic of parenting. I know that is not easy. It's not an easy thing. We can talk in 15, 20, or 45 minutes. But the task is so huge. You know, even raising your child from infants to adulthood is so many years, a lot of challenges. Father, we have talked about spiritual parenting. We have concentrated much. We have focused more on the spiritual aspect of parenting. And Father, this morning I'm praying for all parents, for all guardians, for all siblings who are taking care of their brothers and sisters. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for that grace. We pray for that, for, for that favor. Help us, O oh Lord. Without you, we cannot do anything. Help us to be role models, just becoming a role model. Sometimes we do mistakes even in front of our, our, our kids, our children. Father, I pray for every parent and guardian this morning that help him or her to be a role model even for the single moms for the single daddies father in the name of Jesus 
In the name of Jesus, I pray that grace should be upon them right now. In Jesus' name, help them to be role models. Help them to set time to, 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 to put time to teach and train their children, their, 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 their all the siblings and everybody who is taking care of any kid. Father, I pray that God help them, help them to teach them diligently, to teach them intentionally, to make sure that they set aside time to, to be together with their families. Help them, fathers, specifically fathers, not to provoke their children and to make sure that they have that fellowship, they have that moment of praying together, singing together, reading the word of God together. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that even when they are disciplining, they are, when they are doing discipline, they are disciplining their kids. Father, help them to be good and to make sure that what they, they are doing is bringing their children close to them, that intimate relationship, and not creating a distance between them and their kids. Father, I know that it is challenging. And we, that's why we said we need, your, we need your intervention. We need you to intervene. We need you to help us. Help all parents. Help all guardians. And I'm praying specifically for the children who are still parented by their parents or guardians. In the name of Jesus Christ, help them to obey their parents. Help them to, 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 to hear what they're being told. Help them to accept correction. Help them, oh Father, to respect, to treat their parents with respect, to make sure that also they pray for their parents. Father, that's what I've learned this morning. And I pray that special grace for children, for parents, every one of us. Help us, Lord, to accomplish this task that you have entrusted us, that you have believed that, oh Lord, we can do it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Make more claps for Jesus. Hallelujah.